The 2018 Royal Automobile Club's 1000 mile trial is here once again and continues the revival of the event first staged in 1900 to demonstrate the potential of these horseless carriages to an, at the time, sceptical public. There was plenty of time for crews to arrive on the Sunday morning to get scrutineering done and dusted, admire the machinery and partake in light-hearted banter with fellow competitors before the official start at 4.30pm. Never done it before, um, keen on rallying generally, um, but never done this one so I thought I'd give it a go. Done lots of rallies but never done the 1000 mile trial and we thought the sun was shining so we'll come and do it. What could be better than driving around the English and Welsh countryside in an open top car in this weather? Nothing. Oh, we always enjoy it. Lovely hotels, there's a nice atmosphere. I really like driving around in the old car. And uh, yeah, what's not to like, really? Well, this is our first 1,000 mile trial together. And it's both of us our first 1,000 miles. So hopefully we'll do all right and have a bit of fun. First time I've done it, first time you've done it? Yeah, first yeah. time, yeah. 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 First newbies. Time. Newbies in this. So, uh, looking forward to it. Primarily, we come here to run the car and have some fun. It's a great event. Uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed it over the years, so you know, we'll do the best we can, as we, as we always do, and see where we end up. Uh, I just love driving little cars. And what better way of doing it with your mate and uh, other people and just having fun. All right, my dad. And if you do well, great. If you don't, it doesn't matter anyway. Well, I've got a good navigator, Tony Brooks. So I'm um, hoping to, you know, I don't know, top 10 maybe, with a bit of luck. <laughs> got Nick on board to show me where to go. Some people say he knows what he's doing. The Lagonda was a little bit too heavy for the tests. So I decided this year to come with a BMW. It's a 327 slash 28, a sports coupe uh, from 1938. The first owner was a very famous uh, German uh, race driver, Huschko von Hanstein. He was the head of the race department of Porsche. I have a picture, a pre-war picture of that car and another car he owns. And on both cars there are the same number plates, due to tax reasons, I believe. He was really a funny guy. The car is a 927 Bugatti 35C, that's a two-litre engine with a roots compressor. It was uh, actually, the first uh, owner was a racing car driver in Argentina and the car slowly found its way back from Argentina through the States to France where she raced at uh, Angoulême, which is a race course uh, in uh, central France, which is very well known to uh, Bugatti owners. And uh, then she found her way to us. I bought trusted old Betsy out of retirement. Um, the 1928 Ford Model A um, that we have huge history with. She's um, been a good friend for a long time. We won the Sahara Rally in her. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Flying Scotsmen. That sort of history. The competitive element of day one would consist of one test and one regularity. A short day indeed, and the ideal prologue to whet the appetite for the adventure that would begin in earnest on day two. Some 30 brave and hearty crews would complete over 27 regularities and 19 tests on some of the best roads that Britain has to offer. Clark of the Course Guy Woodcock once again imparts words of wisdom to those wishing to brush up on the mystical world of regularity rallying. Uh, uh, rally instructions which are different than the rallies in the United States. Uh, so there's a bit of a learning curve so what we have to do is unlearn how, we, how we've done it in the past and learn uh, the new way. Hopefully we won't embarrass ourselves. Starting from Woodcote Park, the first short leg takes us near to Reading. Leg 2 sees us journey towards the south coast, then up towards Bristol. Leg 3 takes us over the border and on into the heart of Wales. For Leg 4, we explore the wonders of Welsh roads, then return to England on Leg 5 to venture into the Midlands. 
Our final leg returns us to the southeast and the finish at Chesham. This is the third time I've done the event and looking forward to having a bit of more of a success. But you will, I'm with a great driver in a fabulous car, so it should do well. <laughs> At precisely 4.30pm on a sun-drenched Sunday afternoon, some 30 enthusiastic crews in their magnificent classic machines left the start line for the summertime wheeled adventure, that is, the Royal Automobile Club's 1,000 mile trial. Within yards of the start, we are straight into Test 1, the traditional blast up the captain's drive, following in the wheel tracks of the legends of yesteryear. Once out on the open road, the leafy lanes of Surrey would be our playground for the afternoon. Although competitive, results from this first short day would not count towards the final placings, but act purely as a warm-up that would blow the cobwebs off some of these old-timers and their cars. The first regularity of the event takes us out into the countryside south of the M25. Continuing southwest, we pass by the Dunsfold Aerodrome, which is home to the Top Gear test track. Thankfully, all the crews managed to navigate their way through these opening trials of the rally, albeit with a little helping hand from the locals, keeping us on the straight and narrow. The end of day one and the glorious Workfield estate bathed in the amber glow with the setting sun makes for a more than pleasant overnight stop. However, some were already feeling the heat. Yeah, it wouldn't be uh, normal without us having a little drama on the first day as always. <laughs> so what's going on? We're frying in the cockpit and um, it's just running too hot so we've got to take the bottom part of the bonnet off to get some airflow through there. Day two and already major mechanical woes have befallen Sue Shoesmith and Trina Harley. We had a breakdown yesterday and we discovered that Sue didn't have second gear because she thinks she's broken a tooth. So uh, we nursed it back home last night to my home in Worcester and stayed the night and got my car out of the garage, which hopefully is all ready to go. Um, and uh, we're back in the rally again, so great news all around. nothing too ridiculously difficult but I know as the week progresses the traps will be set and beginners like me are going to fall into them for sure. There's a frisson of excitement as the thousand mile trial gets underway once again. Uh, obviously potential rally winning car here, the uh, number 11 Bentley of Customs and Hall but uh, the competition is going to be fierce this year. There's some top crews. For the true Corinthians, the amateurs like Christian and I, it gets harder and harder every year. As the summer heat wave continued, we would open the score sheets for the first of the day's competitive sections. Two regularities before the mid-morning coffee break would see us heading southwest through the countryside north of Basingstoke and then west through the fictional setting for the novel Watership Down. For some, the narrow country lanes of England's green and pleasant land were proving a little too narrow. Thank you. 
morning coffee. that the countryside is so beautiful in England. It's just absolutely stunning in the sunshine. The places where we've been stopping, the, the hotel, stunning, absolutely stunning. I mean, a fabulous time. Leaving the tea and cakes of the Jack Russell behind us, we continued west to follow the old Roman road between Oxenwood and Lower Chute for the third regularity. A long run through Salisbury Plains which skirts Stonehenge and our route continues down the Wiley Valley for the fourth regularity before lunch. Despite the change of car, Shoesmith and Harley were finding their way around with ease and proved cream of the crop on two of the morning's wrecks. Perfectly fitting the period feel of the event, the Royal Signals Museum at Blandford Camp provided the ideal venue for lunch. Uh, the run so far has been going okay. It's a completely different concept for my driver Dan because I don't think he's ever driven a vintage vehicle. So you really have to think ahead as opposed to what we're used to as a Porsche 911. So you just anything can happen and you just go for it. Whereas this, you've got a plan. Um, and it's taken a while to get used to it, but we're going steady. So we'll see how that goes for us. I think we've dropped 10 this morning, so, uh, but that's before the test. This thing's a little bit slow on the test, so we shall see. We shall see this afternoon. We've got three tests this afternoon. Where are you lying? Uh, sixth overall. Yeah, we're happy. <laughs> that's why I'm smiling. <laughs> Back on the open road and the afternoon's adventure were taking two tests on the secretive Bobbington tank ranges. It was then on to one further regularity which would take crews across the Downs and through the village of Chesselbourne, a location mentioned in the Doomsday Book. The BMW 327 of Gerd Antonius Bueller and James Ewing came out as the top dogs on reg 5 of the day as the usual hazards added to the obstacle course that is harvest time in rural England. Also showing early form in the Fraser Nash BMW was Lovett and Bowl in second place on the reg. The final test of the day would be held at an old hero favourite, the Clay Pigeon Raceway. Paul Crosby was in his usual competitive mode but was finding the handling of the MG not quite up to that of his normal 911. Nevertheless, he and Johnson secured third fastest. But cream of the crop was ex-British touring car driver Peter Lovett, guided by Matthew Fowl, who claimed top spot with a time of 1 minute 23. Peter Kite and Tony Brooks put in a sterling drive to place fourth quickest. Crew after crew tackled the tight twists and turns of the car track in their gleaming machines with two-ton Bentleys being thrown around like go-karts. A quick top-up at the services before we headed into the West Country for the final regularity of the day. We arrive at one of the true highlights of the event, Cheddar Gorge. Named as the second greatest natural wonder of Britain, this prehistoric site boasts the highest inland limestone cliffs which tower 450 feet above the roadway. The spectacular drive made for a fitting end to a glorious first full day's competition before arriving at our overnight stop, the Cabri House Hotel, just south of Bristol. Another beautiful day comes to a close in the best way possible, with a beer and a sunset. We missed a couple of regularities, but we had a great visit. Absolutely. What about the navigation? How are you getting on with it? Oh, the navigation is brilliant. The navigation is brilliant. It's just the driver, not so much. You know. I pay you later. <laughs>
Day three of the thousand mile trial begins at 8 a.m. At the end of leg two, the leaderboard has Lovett and Fowl on top, closely followed by Crosby and Johnson with Bueller and Ewing in third. It's very tight at the top. We're three seconds um, away from Mr. Lovett. So um, yeah, exciting day, I'm sure. It'll swap and change a few times. I think we're lying about eight, two or three seconds off third. So we've uh, got to be happy. We had a fuel leak after the test. We smelt fuel and we thought we'll ignore it and then we broke down because we ran out of fuel and it was all spewing out of the carburetor but we fixed it. We did a quick 20 minute sprint to the fuel station, filled it up and we got back in time so it didn't cost us anything except for the fuel. Not everyone got through the previous day's exertions unscathed. Very sad morning this morning. Um, unfortunately the crankshaft has broken. So we've had to retire. Well, the car's been misfiring, it's been going bup, 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 which um, isn't really particularly good for it. And shortly after, well, after the last regularity, um, horrible noise in the engine and um, resultant broken crankshaft. Do any of you know which way you're going? Yes. <laughs> Speak to Matt up the top. Heading north, we avoid the commuter traffic of Bristol and stick to the quieter country lanes for a lengthy link section and a regularity before arriving at the famous Castlecombe circuit for a series of three tests. With the crews now running on the road in results order, we see those at the sharp end taking on the challenges first. Bragging rights were shared on this occasion between Crosby and Johnson, who secured two top spots in a fourth, while Lovett and Fowl claimed three second places in a row. Uh -oh. Peter Kite and Tony Brooks in their Fraser Nash BMW scored top spot on test one, then a third and a fourth on the remaining test. With the Castle Coombe test completed, a short link section takes us to our morning's coffee in the village of Acton Turville and the Fox and Hounds pub, where our friends from across the pond were finding British roads a bit of a mystery. Well, you have these things in this country I'm not used to. They're called curves, so um, we're, we're learning how to navigate those. But uh, no, the, 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 the fault is mostly on the driver. Uh, we're just uh, uh, getting acclimated to the environment and the conditions and the and the roads and uh, it's uh, my learning curve is uh, maybe not as quick as it should be. <laughs> ready for Showing great navigational skills, Tony Brooks guided Peter Kite into a winning position on the wreck, just pipping Trina Hartley and driver Sue Shoesmith.
the route would see the first English section of the rally completed before crossing over the Old Severn Bridge and embarking on our adventures in the land of song and dragons. <laughs> As our hearty souls head into Wales, Reg 3 takes us around the outskirts of the Forest of Dean and on to our lunch stop at the Hardwick, a pub and restaurant run by Great British menu winner Stephen Terry. We find Peter Kite with the mechanics. Had he been pushing the car a little too hard? Oh, we've just got some uh, whining noises from underneath and uh, we think, well, apart from anything else, the um, prop shaft's got no grease on it, so we're just putting some precautionary grease on it. Heading up the Ars Valley over the famous bridge at Krakow, our journey takes us over the Monmouth and Brecon Canal and past yet another classic form of transportation to head for the Brecon Beacons National Park and Reg 4. For the afternoon coffee stop, we arrive at the award-winning Penderim Distillery, where, much to our driver's disappointment, they were barred from sampling the wares. More glorious landscapes lay in wait for our travellers as they encountered further competitive sections on the Epic Military Ranges, part of the largest military training zone in the UK, just north of Sennybridge. The end of day three and we arrive at the Metropole Hotel in Llandrin Dodd Wells, a watering hole well known to the hardcore rallying fraternity and where the day's tales would get longer and longer. We've done some strange things that we don't know why we've got penalties and we've done some silly things. We did go shopping earlier, we went to the wrong road for seven and a half miles, only because we couldn't, we had to go seven and a half miles. So that's like 20 minutes. Great scenery, wonderful countryside, four different counties, marvellous, marvellous day. On a, a regularity with four time, timing points, we actually got four zeros, which is a first, which was absolutely delightful. <laughs> it was a hard day, but it was fun. We did a lot of mistakes. We had trucks, we had uh, tractors, you name it, we had it. Uh, we were like running seven cars in a row, bumper to bumper, for four controls. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> up and down, up and yeah, down. It's called snakes and ladders. I know. It's mostly ladders. Oh no, snakes. It's very slippery today. Down, downwards. As day three draws to a close, crews could be found in their favourite environments, the bar and dining room. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, really, really spectacular. Great scenery yesterday. Looking forward to uh, well, some challenging uh, motoring today. So, uh, yeah, very excited. Having a great time. Bit of ping pong backwards and forwards with Mr. Lovett, but uh, it's all good fun. As we leave the Metropole Hotel behind, we head out on the first regularity of the day, with the route taking us on a lap of Mid Wales, only to then return to the Metropole for a second night. First out on the road again are the two rally leaders, ex-British touring car racer Peter Lovett and Formula One legend Nigel Mansell's ex-mechanic Paul Crosby. We travel through Abergwes in Common on some of the most iconic and classic of driving roads that the Principality has to offer, including a trip up the Devil's Staircase. Also famed for its forestry and reservoirs, this remote area is used by the RAF for low-level practice. Or maybe it's for keeping an eye on the locals.
arrive at the Talbot Hotel, Tregaram for morning coffee. A grade two listed inn, the Talbot dates back to the 17th century and is where American President Jimmy Carter spent a night in 1986. Not the only joker in the pack. Uh, we just had a minor error there on the last regularity and we played our joker. So um, we dropped 26 seconds, which is reduced to 15. And now, according to those results, we're four seconds in the lead. The cars are made to drive on these roads, and I, I just can't stop smiling, really. I don't really mind how we're doing. I know we're picking up seconds here and there, but I'm having such a good time. So it's great. And how's the birthday boy? Uh, oh, yeah, it's my driver's birthday today, and uh, he's having a good time. I'm trying to keep him happy by giving him loads of sweets. So I think all is good in the car of MG number 34. <laughs> I'm slightly hoarse because I've been shouting at my driver, who, lovely Blake, there he is, is somewhat in competent. <laughs> what do you think, Michael? Are you as incompetent no as comments. he is a navigator? I am incredibly competent. Yeah. I am more competent than you can possibly imagine. So you're very, very competent. <laughs> The main test of the day was held at the extraordinary Mid Wales Activity Centre. Created on farmland, this ribbon of tarmac winds a course over the hills and is a well known local motorsport mecca. As crews filed through, Ben Cousins was once again in a determined mood, but this overshoot would prove costly. Meanwhile, the father and son team of Bertin Pierre Van Hoot in their Fraser Nash BMW came in a strong six on the first section of the test with two minutes, nine seconds. Another father and son team, Ian and Ewan Beatty in the Hotchkiss, put in a time of 2.28, which was good for mid-table. But it was that crew again, Lovett and Foul, who took the honours with a time of two minutes dead in their Fraser Nash. As we continue our journey west towards the coast, the glorious Welsh roads lead us to lunch at the Nanteos Mansion in Aberystwyth. The mansion is said to be haunted, no doubt, by the spirit of another lost navigator. Nick's got white knuckles. He's been catching over the car. He caught out a bit of me that whoa, when we're going too fast. Yeah, I'm too slow. Well, too I'm slow. <laughs> I'm wanting you to go faster. <laughs> Tony expects me to do my absolute ultimate best and it's often not good enough <laughs> this is a winner's drink it just puts a little bit more alertness back into me get the coffee infused back into my bloodstream and i'm uh, good to go a winner's drink the regularity just now i think we've dropped a few seconds towards the end so the gaps almost back to what it was first thing this morning I've done a few night events up here, so it's nice to see some of it in the daylight, although you see some big drops that you don't realise are there at night. Proper Welsh, Welsh ruddy roads, yeah. How many jokers have you got left? I don't know. We can extend that joker, can't can we? Can if, yeah, yeah, if we get a worse score somewhere, oh, we can exchange that for the worst score. So I sell you mine. No, unfortunately, you don't get anything for your joke if you don't use it, so I suggest you use it. <laughs> <laughs> Following the light-hearted lunchtime banter, our crews hit the road again. The afternoon would consist of three more regularities on the classic driving roads of Mid Wales, passing through reservoir country where low water levels were evidence of the recent heat wave. A quick splash and dash for the crews at the Blue Bell pub before we take on the last regularity and a run through Devil's Bridge. The sight of the Hodgkiss looked like a scene from a 30 spy film. A run through the driving wonderland that is the Elam Valley would end up delivering us back once more to the sanctuary of what has become our home in Wales, the Metropole Hotel. It's a beautiful scenery. The Elam Valley this afternoon was magnifico, beautiful. Driver and co-pilot still talking to each other, which is the most important thing. 
And we are now ready for the big match, beer, dinner, and hopefully it's going to be a night to remember. We've had a really good day today, so I think we deserved a glass of champagne. Lovely. Got to make the most of it whilst it lasts. We had a great day. Yeah. It finally came together. Fast tests, good regularities, great routes. Car went well. So yeah, we're happy. It was a great day, great regularities, beautiful sceneries, but my shoulders are done. <laughs> At the end of leg four, the Lovett and Foul, Crosby and Johnson battle continues, with only one second separating the top two crews, while Shoesmith and Harley hang on to third. We're one second behind the dream team. Um, so, yeah, very, very close, obviously, and uh, uh, there's, there's plenty of tricks that I'm sure the organisers have got up their sleeves for us over the next couple of days. I think we're sixth, only a half a minute from the lead, so I still think we're in with a chance. Great roads, challenging tests, all going well. As we leave the Metropole for the final time, six regularities and three tests will beat today's challenge. But with the intense competition adding to the attrition rate, would everyone make it? To kick off the first reg of the day, we head northwest towards Ryada. Heading further north, we encounter the spectacular scenery of the Sarnai Forest and then on towards Newtown, our destination being the spectacular black and white Greganov Hall in Powys for the morning's time control and coffee. However, there was bad news for one of our crews. Coming in here, we've just taken the lead back by one second and we've decided to retire to give the others a chance. Yeah, we thought we'd quit while we're ahead. The differential is broken in the car. Oh. Whilst we were leading, I hasten to add, which is even more annoying. With one of the leading pair out of the running, the remaining crews resume the competition. Loughton Park Speed Hill Climb will play host to two tests before lunch. The Bugatti T35 of Federico Goetje, now no longer in the competition, had Hero MD Patrick Berg giving directions. Would they ever be seen again? The Jag SS of Owens and Den Hartog doggedly hung on to a mid-table placing despite their spirited drive. As crew after crew tackled the track, the Bentley Supersports of David and Julia Little place fourth. An excellent drive indeed. No, the best was the break. The best, no. Lunch was taken at a more gentle pace at the Roten Castle Hotel. <laughs> We've had our share of mistakes today, but the car is running a lot better. So that's fine. All is well. We're learning lots. I think that's the thing. We're learning lots. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard, I think. Oh, yeah. That wasn't too bad. I mean, like going at fast speeds or, you know, going past a couple of junctions in a row, it gets hard to say everything in the right time, you know? But I think I'm doing okay. I mean, it's only my first you know, time navigating, so hopefully it gets easier. He's done nothing all morning. Nothing. Such hard work. We're off to Weston this afternoon. Home of some classic RACs from the, the good old days, so there should be a good laugh around that. And uh, following the footsteps of our heroes, so we'll see what it brings. Paul Blockich was becoming something of a radio star, dishing out pearls of wisdom to anyone who would listen. Thank you. See you later. Bye bye. Leaving the splendour of Roughton Castle, we head off to a regularity held in the grounds of Western Park, a puzzle that would have many navigators scratching their heads.
After all the fun and games, a welcome coffee in the stable block would calm any frayed nerves. It was a tough day, really tough, but we didn't get lost. So very happy, Dad's happy, it's all that matters. Thank you. Thank you. For the final test of the day, we visit Kerbera Spring Course, where probably the most valuable car on the rally, the Bugatti T35, was put through its paces in the capable hands of Federico Goetje. Meanwhile, Hero Cup leaders Gresley and White were steadily securing championship points with seventh fastest. Our Scott and Cooper in the Bentley 4.5 Le Mans put in a time of 2 minutes 1, which was good for fifth fastest. The Bentley 4.5 Tourer of Cousins and Hoare was on the ragged edge with a time of 1 minute 59 seconds, which placed them third on the test. Tying with Lovett and Foul was the Bentley Supersports of Graham and Marina Goodwin with a time of 1 minute 51. With the day's exertions over, we head to the famous Belfry Hotel and golfing Mecca for our final overnight hole. Well, we had a brilliant trip round Kerbera just now. We went across the grass because of a bit of a sighting issue as to where we should go. Without that, I think we might have had the fastest, but we still did very well. It went remarkably fast on the Kerbera sprint. And some compliments to the driver, you understand. I was quite surprised at how fast he did it, so that was good. Um, mixed fortunes on the regularities. Some good, some definitely draw a line over, draw a cover over. This day was so far the best. No problem with the car, no great problems with finding the roads, nice tests, nice uh, regularities, all went well today. As night falls over the Belfry, the upmarket hotel bar seemed the perfect venue for the final evening's wind down before leg six tomorrow and the run to the flag. Day six dawns and a hearty breakfast prepares crews for the day ahead. Peter Lovett seemed in a pensive mood. I think there's a few people nipping around. We've only got to make the slightest mistake and um, it's still a bit too close, isn't it, for comfort? Some took a more relaxed approach. Last day, uh, we had a really good day yesterday. Uh, climbed up the leaderboard a bit. Um, all getting close, uh, nearly up the top of our class. So it's all down to today, really, for us. So, uh, but we're looking forward to it, haven't we? Yeah, we are. It's exciting. The thought of potentially winning, it's there for us to take if we're good enough to take it. And I'm really hoping that we can take advantage of the situation. A couple of mistakes either way, and we could be there. The fact that we're still going is amazing. A lot of cars have had a lot of problems, and uh, it's made it quite scary to think that we might not make it. We had problems ourselves yesterday, we had no spark, but we are here at the beginning of the final day, so we just hope we can get to the end. We had a cracking morning, we were doing really well in the morning, and then the afternoon it all went completely pear-shaped. <laughs> Lots of mess-ups and the trip going backwards when we started a regularity. So, you know, we're sadly out of the contention now, but there's no pressure anymore, so we're just going to enjoy today. Here's my best mate, Tony Brook. <laughs> How's he been as a navigator? Bloody good. How's your driving been? Bloody brilliant. <laughs> At 8.30, the first cars leave the Belfry. And we are soon into the first test of the day, a fast blast through the grounds of Merivale Hall. With all safely through test one, it's on to the first of the day's regularities and another meander through England's green and pleasant land.
The route takes us around the Ashby de la Zouche Canal between Atherstone and Hinckley. A quick pit stop at the bar for coffee and we were back on the road. Another regularity, and then the first of two visits to Wilton Mill car track, either side of lunch. Crews would also cross the Grand Union Canal no less than five times as we followed the route of the second regularity of the day. Lunch was served in the delightful Red Lion East Haddon. We just hold it on in there, yeah, and he's down to eight seconds now. Paul and Peter retired with a diff issue on the MG, which was a big shame because we've been having a good battle. So but, who's the biggest threat now then? Uh, it's um, Steve Owen and Bart in the Jaguar, they're just eight seconds behind us. I mean, obviously, we, we'd all prefer to be in a rally rather than be retired, but we had a good run and we led for a while, so that's commiserations, I suppose. We broke down on one of the regularities, fixed that, and we didn't have enough oomph to get it to start. Well, look at the size of it. Am I going to push this? Guys, thank you so much, everyone. Pleasure. Test three of the day, and our second visit to Wilton Mill would be our penultimate test of the rally and would throw up few surprises on the timesheets. Peter Kite and Tony Brooks posted the time at 2 minutes 11, good for fourth place. But as the rest of the crews tackled the tight twists and turns, it was the usual suspects in the shape of Lovett and Bell who stole the show with a time of 2 minutes 4 seconds. The final regularity of the event sees us on familiar territory around Falsley Hall, Daventry and Cannons Ashby before heading south to Bicester Heritage. The last competitive test of the event was held at the World War II bomber base, now home to an array of classic car companies. Midfield runners Blockswitch and Canova placed 12 on this, the final test, which saw the remaining crews battling it out to the bitter end. Owens and Din Hartog kept themselves in contention for the big prize with a time of 2 minutes 17. But there was a stink in the tail for the Titanic Bentley 4.5 of R. Scott and Cooper. Despite putting in a sterling effort, it all went wrong when mechanical gremlins halted their progress at the final hurdle. Meanwhile, test front runners Kite and Brooks were on their way to third quickest with a time of 2 minutes 4. But staking a claim of kings of the test were Lovett and Fowl in the Fraser Nash, who once again clinched top spot, though pursued hard by the good wins in second place. It was great. It was great. It was great. We did what we set out to do, which was to learn, and we have learned. <laughs> yeah, we've learned quite a lot. Yes, we have. We've had fun, the weather's been fantastic, and as always, the organisation's been great, so uh, absolutely no complaints at all. Only yeah. a few arguments. Yeah, only a few arguments. We actually, on the last regularity, we did it nearly perfectly, and then we got lost afterwards. <laughs> We've been so lucky with the good weather as well. Yeah, yeah, and, that makes uh, such a difference. Lots of competition and great camaraderie. It's been a fab, fab rally. The tests, the regularities, everything about it, I've just been absolutely first class. It's been really, really good. Fabulous event. Well done to all the team, uh, well done to the fellow competitors because super camaraderie, good fun. Uh, can't wait to come back next year. The RAC 1000 mile trial is without doubt the best rally I've ever done, and I've done a lot of them, and it's fabulous. The roads, the people, everything is brilliant. Everyone should do it. Ah! <laughs> 
top honours on the 2018 Royal Automobile Club's Thousand Mile Trial was claimed by Peter Lovett and Matt Fowle. With Stephen Owens and Bart Den Hartog, the delighted runners-up, Gressley and White placed a respectable third. To see these pre-war cars being driven as they should be around the countryside, around beautiful countryside, I have to say the route has been spectacular this year, it really has. As we enjoyed the traditional awards dinner, a parade of class winners collected the spoils of six days of hard-fought competition. So after the fifth round of the Hero Cup for drivers, Daniel Gressley extends his lead over Paul Bloxich in second place with Stephen Owen third. Meanwhile, Elise White hangs on to top spot in the Golden Roma battle for navigators from challengers Andrew Durden and Ian Canavan. Join us next time for the Hero Challenge. <laughs>